We're going to start with a fourth degree polynomial function and collect a bunch of information about this function, such as critical numbers, intervals where it's increasing and decreasing, concavity, um, relative extrema, and inflection points. So let's get started. The first thing we want to do is find any critical numbers. These are going to occur after we take the derivative, we want to set it equal to zero. So kind of one term at a time, we're going to use the power rule and say four comes down in front and we reduce the exponent by one. On the next term, we can bring the eight along and just focus on the x cubed. Power rule again, exponent comes down, reduce the exponent by one. Finally, that constant um, is going to have a derivative of zero. We can clean this up a little bit and make it look a little bit nicer by bringing along 4x cubed plus 24x squared and drop the zero at the end. Now we want to know when this equals zero, so let's do some factoring first. These have a common factor of 4 and x squared, so if we move that to the outside, we're going to be left with x plus 6 on the inside of a set of parentheses. Now why we want to do that is to find critical numbers are when the uh, first derivative is equal to zero. So that's going to occur from our factored form if we plugged in a zero for the x that's being squared, and also an x value of negative 6 for that second factor. To figure out if these actually are going to be extrema, what we want to do is set them up on a number line in number line order. So negative 6 is going to go on the left, and 0 is going to go on the right-hand side. Next, what I'm going to do is go ahead and substitute one value from each portion of this number line into our function. So I'm going to choose negative 10 over on the left-hand side, maybe negative 2 in the middle, and positive 10 over on the right-hand side. Any value that you choose in those intervals is going to produce the exact same result. Maybe different numbers, but what we care about is positive or negative. So let's get plugging these in. So we have 4 times negative 10 is going to get plugged in, and I'm using the factored version of our first derivative negative 10 plus 6. Now what we want to care about is, do they turn out positive or negative? Not specifically the number that comes out, but simply that 4 is going to be positive. When you square a negative 10, it's going to be positive. And negative 10 plus 6 is still going to be negative. So we have two positives and a negative multiplied together to overall give us a negative outcome. Next, let's continue on with negative 2. So we have 4 times negative 2 squared times negative two plus six. Positive, positive, positive. All positives multiply together to give us an overall positive result. And then finally, let's do positive 10. We have four times 10 squared times 10 plus six. That tells us positive, positive, positive. Again, all positive values multiply together to be positive. So, our first derivative is going to tell us about the original function, that it's decreasing initially because it was negative, then it's increasing until we get to zero, but then it's increasing on the other side of zero as well. Now, both of these, the x equals zero and the x equals negative six are both critical numbers. However, only one of them is going to be where we have an extrema, a maximum or minimum. As you can see, we're decreasing, then increasing, and then increasing. That tells us that we're going to get a minimum at an x value of 6. Zero, however, will not give us an extrema. So what we want to do is next list out our intervals for increasing and decreasing. As you can see on the left-hand side from negative six, we're decreasing, we're going downhill. So we'd say negative infinity to negative six. We're gonna leave out that uh, negative six. In fact, these are gonna be open intervals for all of them. All right, the next interval is between negative six and zero. You can see we're increasing. So we'll say negative six to zero, again, open intervals. And then we have another one going from zero to infinity way off there on the right-hand side. So open intervals all the way around. Next, we want to figure out these local uh, relative or local extrema. So as we said, negative 6 for an x value, we're going to get a minimum. What we want to do is take that x value, take it back to the original function, and plug it in to get our minimum value. So we're replacing it back into the original function for each of the x's. We say negative 6 to the fourth plus 8 times negative 6 cubed 
plus 365. Maybe some calculator help on this to get us to the right value, but it's gonna be negative 67. So we would classify negative 67 as being our minimum value, and that occurs at negative six. As an ordered pair, this would be negative six comma negative 67. All right, next up, we're gonna think about concavity and try to determine any inflection points. So to do so, what we're gonna do is basically the same process as we just did with the first derivative, but with the second derivative. So I already have listed out our first derivative. We'll just take its derivative again, and I think we get 12x squared, using the power rule, plus 48x. Again, power rule for both of those. A little bit of factoring. These both have a 12 and an x in common. So as we factor that out, we'll get x plus 4 inside that set of parentheses. Figuring out when this equals 0, we'll get x equals 0 for that first x, and x equals negative 4 for the set of parentheses. Again, these are going to go on to a number line, negative 4, 0, and split this number line into three different pieces this time. Again, go back, and we're going to fill in one value from each portion of this number line. So some value to the left of negative 4, say negative 10, between negative 4 and 0, maybe a negative 2, and maybe a positive 10 over on the right-hand side. I'm going to plug these into the second derivative, and we're going to determine positive or negative for each one. So we have 12 times negative 10 goes in for x, and negative 10 plus 4. So 12 is positive, negative 10 is negative, and negative 10 plus 4 is overall negative. One positive and two negatives is overall going to make a positive in this portion of the number line. Repeat it two more times. 12 times negative 2 negative two plus four, positive, negative, positive. Two positives and a negative means overall negative. And finally, 10, 12 times 10 times 10 plus four. Positive, 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 bunch of positives multiply together to give us an overall positive result for that portion of the number line. So what that tells us about concavity is we are concave up in the for first portion, concave down in the second portion, and concave up in the third. So at negative four, our concavity has changed. We went from in concave up to concave down. So that means we're going to get an inflection point at an x value of negative four. To determine this inflection point, we want to go back to our original function and plug in negative four. So f of negative four is going to be negative four to the fourth power plus eight times negative four cubed plus 365. All right, again, calculator, this is what they're best at. 109 came out. So that means the inflection point is gonna be negative four comma 109. At zero, our concavity changes there as well. We go from concave down to concave up. So another inflection point, so we're going to plug in zero to our original function, zero to the fourth plus eight times zero cubed plus 365 is going to give us 365 as an output because zero to the fourth is zero. And then the middle term will be zero plus 365. So as an inflection point, we have zero comma 365. The last question to answer on this is intervals for concavity. As you can see from our number line, we've already kind of um, played these out, but let's list them in interval notation. So we were concave up on the left-hand side. So that's going to go from negative infinity to negative four, open intervals, and then concave up on the very right-hand side. So a second interval, so we'll throw a union symbol in between. That goes from zero to infinity. While in the middle, we were concave down. That goes from negative four to zero again with open intervals. And that's all the questions we have to answer about this original fourth degree polynomial. Hope this helps out. Just remember first derivative tells us about increasing and decreasing. Um, and second derivative tells us about concavity. Good luck.